Alrighty. And usually when I do this, this is where it all goes fucking shit and it comes up with technical difficulties and whatnot. But Lovely. Welcome to the Granite Zero podcast. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. It's my pleasure, as always. <laughs> so we were going to do um, tomorrow night, but obviously you're going to be just knackered from running half a marathon for whatever reason. Why would you run half a marathon? <laughs> Who does that? Oh, just for fun, you know. Apparently I do. So <laughs> Yeah, got that tomorrow. Oh, that sounds like a fucking yeah, half nightmare fun. Me. Yeah, I mean, it's not great. Um, <laughs> the sort of first few miles are a killer, to be fair. But it's, it's always, like, the, it's always the beginning, isn't it? So I quite like get, doing it. Sort of into a rhythm, and Absolutely. then you like, oh, this ain't bad. Yeah. yeah, it's not too bad. And I go with my friend, so oh, that's we right. just gossip for two hours. Oh, yeah, it's not too bad. Days. It's that's not too bad. That's what you want. I, I, I know. I, I, I know, know, right? Before I do any sort of jogging or anything like that, I'm on my own, and I, I'm, I'm. Oh, really? I'll get to a certain point, and I'm like. We just go back, mate. And then I answer myself. I go, yeah, sure. Let's go. Let's go home. That's the worst part, isn't it? Yeah. If I run by myself, the it's awful. In my head. Like, I see a hill. I'm like, yeah, walk. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and they're the worst at times. They're the worst. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, that's, what, yeah, what that's my the, plan for tomorrow. I, I saw a, I saw a funny little reel on, um, on Instagram when I was scrolling through and it was like things only runners do or, or non, was it, was it, only runners do on non non fucking decent runners, put it that way. And it's little things like you see a lamppost and you go, oh, I'll get to that lamppost and then I'll jog. And then it's like, oh, there's some more people here. You can't you can't walk now. You have to keep going. It's like, oh, I do. That. Oh, that's something serious runners do as well. No, I literally do that. Or I'll look through and if I'm doing like the half marathon, I try and do it under two hours. So it gets like the first 15 minutes. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's cool. We're in the 15 minutes. Then it gets half an hour in. I'm like, right, I've only got to do that like another three more times okay that's fine that's fine we can do this you know it's all yeah psychological the whole thing definitely it's insane and, and, and I it like gets sort of the last mile and it then yeah yeah i like to think those sort of things are especially for like for, for myself because i like i said i fucking hate running can't stand it so actually going out and actually doing a run i feel so much better for it like mentally because it's like something i hate mm. doing it's yeah like, oh, i've completed that that's fucking spot on I yeah, exactly. You always feel better afterwards. Yeah, I can, I can go to the gym and smash out a circuit or do some weights, and I'm like, yeah, cool. Nothing like does me head good. Head good? That's not even good English. Um, <laughs> then going out for a run, as much as I hate it, it's like, yeah, I feel fucking good. Yeah. But anyway, no, it's good. It is good. <laughs> enough about fucking running. It wants, it wants to listen to us talk about running. <laughs> um, one thing I All do. All the runners out there. Is obviously you're a copper. That's obviously going to be a, a, a big. <laughs> no, topic. I'm not. Don't we talk about it? at the minute. Don't we talk about it? With um, yeah, hey, can't talk about that, mate. Um, <laughs> at the minute, with all the the like the shit in Bristol and and mm -hmm. all, the, all that other stuff, like it's got to be yeah. hard to fucking see, read, and actually be a part of being in in the in the police. Yeah, I mean, it's like anything. It, I mean, yes, Bristol's happening, but obviously before that we had the murder of the girl that was tarnished with that being a cop that did it. Yeah. Um, so that was where it sort of started quite well, quite recently. I know we're taking out a lot of the last few months of the, the cops getting shit anyway. Um, but for me, certainly the, the last sort of few weeks has, has sort of tripled or quadrupled really um, sort of hate towards police officers. And you can half understand why. There is frustration there and you're looking, certainly if we take, look at this cop that killed someone, I mean, that is horrific. Oh. Anyone killing anyone is horrific, let alone when you've got someone in that power of authority that has done it. But, and rightly so, when you look at the friends of, of Sarah that, that commented afterwards and said, look, I'm not holding police, I'm not holding men responsible. Um it is, it is down to that individual act and that individual person. And we can't take away from that. And then people turning around and saying, oh, he was a police officer, should know better, let's tarnish the police with it, is no different to them turning around and blaming all men. And then yeah. there was uh, the, obviously the lady in government, forgive me, I don't know who, um, but Tehran has said that men should be on a 6 p.m. curfew and tarnishing every single man. So me as a police officer listening to that, it's probably no different to the hundreds and thousands of men that listen to that my dad is an amazing human being. My partner is an amazing human being. Why are they getting tarnished? 
the actions of a man. Why are police officers getting tarnished with the actions of a man? It's no different. But it seems like there's there always wants to be people like hating the police. People like hating authority. And they see us as potentially the bad guys that kill everyone's fun, um, the split up these raids, you know, and all that. And that's seen yeah. to be sort of killjoys of society. So any rebel against the system, any rebel against any form of authority, people do. Oh, definitely. obviously. It was like they're getting one up. And there are people out there that hate police. I mean, you probably look at in the reasons as to why, and they've probably got a record as long as their arm and haven't had the best experience. Yeah. But still, it's that minority of people that hate the police are the ones that you will ordinarily find are the most violent, the most or breaking, the ones that really don't give a shit. And unfortunately, then any message looking at the protests, looking at Bristol, that was meant to be a, a silent kill the bill yeah. um, in, in respect of the parliament government bill. They've looked at that as pretty much a fuck the police attitude. So the people that, that they're genuinely wanting to protest for a cause that they believe in that was always meant to be a peaceful one if you like it is hijacked by thugs really that just see it as an excuse to behave like animals yeah and it's it it just kills the fun for everyone else doesn't it really you know the people that do have valid points you look at the blm movement you look at i mean this now you look at extinction rebellion there was always that small handful of people that ruin it for everyone else and then they wonder why the government turn around and say right you know what you're not doing it anymore yeah. You're not doing it anymore. We've given you an inch. We've taken five miles. Enough. Yeah. And it's just that sort of built up aggression, the built up. I mean, we've been in lockdown for God knows how long as well, which isn't healthy for anyone. So any excuse for anyone to get out and do oh, yeah. something, you know, people are probably joining this now just for something to do. But the the hatred and the anger that is directed at the police service and you're looking at it and they've got broken bones. There are coppers in there with punctured lungs because they've gone to work and done their job. Yeah, and yeah. if they hadn't done that, they would have lost their job. So what do you want? You can't have the police. It's when you want them. You know, nine times out of yeah. ten, if those people looting, setting for li- setting fire to the police vans and and everything like that and, and holding those police officers hostage almost in a police building, I guarantee if they were in trouble, if if something had happened on the street, who would, who would they ring? Exactly. You know, and it's, that's the, that's it's thing, that it? frustration level. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. It's, okay, it's frustrating. It's okay to have a go at the police until you need them. And then it's like, where yeah. were they? It's like, well, hang on a minute. It's, it's, I had this um, a good chat with um, Eddie Cohn about it as well on, the, on a previous episode. It's, mm. it's all that, the whole thing of defund the police and all this. I know that started over in America, but mm. over here as well, they're like, well, yeah. well, just get rid of the police. Oh, okay, sure. So when someone... Then what? Hopefully <laughs> not, when someone breaks through my house and I've got mm-hmm. a wife and two kids and it's just me to try and fucking protect them and I'm phoning the police and there's no police because fucking dickheads are protesting to defund it. Oh, it's just... Mm-hmm. It, that is... Mm-hmm. It's frustrating. It's like, what do you, it's like, it is. And that is a good word. That is exactly what it is. It is frustrating. And I'll be honest with you, majority of the people that I know, and certainly my follow base um, on Instagram are the most supportive group of people that I could ever ask for. So if ever I, I do things like this or, or say anything to do with the police, I mean, give it, give or take one or two people that have probably just created an account just to tell me to go fuck myself. A lot of people, them, Um, majority of them have been absolutely solid and they see the level. I mean, a lot of them, to be fair, are cops themselves or um, military, all of that in sort of the same sort of field, aren't they really? Um, That they have a bit of respect for other people and realise that just because you're in a uniform Used and it. doing a job, trying to maintain some form of order, you're still a human being at the end of the day. You used an amazing word there and that, um, so. and that is respect. And it might be a service thing, whether it's police, firemen, paramedics, nurses, mm. military or whatever. You always have that. It's like a, it's like a core value. You might want to call it yeah. of respect. Like, yeah. I was in the Air Force, and that's one of our core values. Anyway, respect, integrity, mm. service before self, and excellence. That was our absolutely our core values, and it's 
you got you got to respect the you got to respect the police. They're there to protect and I don't know if that's an American thing, but protect and serve. They're there to help you. They're not. I mean, that's and that's what it is. You got and you, you got. Know? Well, that is exactly what it, it is. Yes, the military is uh, is my background. So yes, we went and did our thing abroad. But you guys do it on home turf. You put your lives on the line day mm. day out. Mm. Pardon my French. It's what people don't see. For for, for what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's and nine times out of ten, it is. You know, and certainly serving in the police, you do deal with the same people over and over again. You protect people over and over again, and, and for what? Yeah. You know, sometimes it feels like a never-ending battle because ordinarily, the good people that you come across have been ordinarily sort of victims. Yeah. all the time and that is heartbreaking and they are brilliant but the people you're going to nick mm, not so much yeah exactly you know they're the people that have broken the law that clearly have no morals anyway yeah to be breaking into people's houses to be beating people up on a weekend for fun to be killing people you know all of that stuff i mean i deal predominantly in fraud now so i'm going after people that exploit vulnerable and that, that, you know it's like well clearly that, you have no morals anyway yeah. I, so, God, you're not going to have any towards me if you can't even have it to an 80 yeah. year old lady. I know that's. You know? I saw, I saw <laughs> those uh, episodes you did on um on BBC, and I was like, those those yeah. four people that are like brought it's in. Awful. By- it's obviously, awful. Obviously, there's a few mm. uh, military lads that I follow on on Instagram, and obviously, I had James Elliott on the show. Um, mm. when was it Wednesday, and there's a couple of uh, military lads that had basically their photos taken and then these profiles created. And then yeah. in people are like, I don't know. So I think I've got a ghost in my house. My light was just flickering <laughs> madly. <laughs> and I was just ghosts, mate. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm not having a strobe effect lighting. That is my light going. And again, that is going. And again. We've got ghosts. We've got ghosts. Now we've got a dog. Hello, dog. What have you sensed, our little one? Is there something in here? Is there? Oh, God. Brilliant. That's That's bizarre. It's a bit freaky, actually. Sorry, I interrupted (laughs) you, but that's actually No, that's good. That's good. We love a tangent. We are not alone. Here we go again. Well, we're just going to have a little rave at the same time, if that's That's all right. We'll we'll do that. Um, Yeah. Disco, 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 disco. (laughs) These lads having their profiles taken and then people just thinking. Yeah, no, definitely. Which um, Which is awful because certainly... Speaking to them, like I say, I know James, um, I know a guy called Dave that's in exactly the same situation. I know quite a few um, guys on my Instagram message me like, what can I do? Because I've got women approaching me telling me that I owe the money, that they've given me money. And I'm like, what? you know, what What can you do? They're always going to exploit people. It's like, number one, do I need to come and have a word with you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you going to give it them back? No, but they're not. And, and that's the other level of it that we're not seeing. We've always spoken to the victims that have been directly exploited. But what about those people that are having their images used yeah. to, to commit this fraud? I mean, I, um, I have had my, my photos used before. And it's bizarre. Luckily, I've never been, the, the people that have seen it have actually been people that I know. Yeah, so yeah. I go, oh, Becky, you're on this dating app, but your name's Olivia and things like that. And it's like, well, that's, that's bizarre and it as much as it feels kind of intrusive it's someone purporting to be you for one but then it's like shit what are they getting used for I was half expecting my boss to come in at work the next day and go oh Bex we've got a new case um it's a woman exploiting men and then for them to give me the uh, bit of paper to be my face on there because you're like you don't know <laughs> some weird. people you know I'd be, it'll be bizarre I'd be like uh yeah but it wasn't me so I was about that you know and awesome. some people you can look at and think you know, people have different agendas online. Like some people, uh, eventually someone actually came forward. Um, I put a shout on my Instagram page because I had a private page at the time. So I knew it was one of my followers that had taken my photos. Um, and I got to the bottom of uh, one of the fake profiles and it was someone, unfortunately, uh, trying to stalk her boyfriend that was on uh, on one of these um, dating sites. So I used my profile of a honey trap there which was nice but you know to give her a due she did tell me about it and uh, promised never to use my photos again but I never got to the bottom of the other one yeah 
and it is it's, it's quite daunting so i don't know what these guys are going through constantly having people yeah, yeah. pouring their heart out to them about how much money they have lost all for someone that has just taken a photo online and and where do we stop that how do we stop that do we think the dating apps need to be doing more to protect their yeah. their definitely customers i am um, did an experiment once with uh, with bumble so while I was proving a point when I was going to these dating agencies saying you need to do more. Now you can get verified on Bumble. So you send, you put your profile photos up, you send a photo of your ID or a selfie. That's what you do. Send a selfie and then it will verify you on Bumble with a blue tick. So you know that that is the person you're speaking to is the same as, as the photos. What it doesn't change is as soon as that verified stamp is there, you can change your photos. Oh, fucking hell so you're thinking okay so you you now put they've put that extra level of security up there yeah but then to to verify it but then if i if i did it and i yeah put my profile photo on there put my name on there did a selfie fine yeah it's there it's verified and then i can take them all off and put a 50 year old man on there and it would say it was verified that's weird so the protection level of the dating apps and i approached them about it i mean i've not got very far i don't think they care all that much to be honest um as long as they're getting paying customers yeah. to uh to get on there they're, they're not overly bothered but i think a lot more responsibility needs to be had with these platforms and what are they doing about it definitely you know so a, that's what i think it's just a strange time that we're in isn't it it's like um yeah i read um, the other day that they're spending on the, on the military budget now for uh, like cyber protection and all that sort of stuff and it's like whoa hang on <laughs> still mm. need forces you're cutting all these soldiers away yeah for, for internet use what if someone actually comes over yeah and yeah then, exactly oh, we, what we've done is we've defunded the military and the police so yeah good luck yeah <laughs> Oh, exactly. by the way, you're not America, so you don't have any weapons yourself. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah, that's going to be fun, isn't it, Jess? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't even. Don't even. So, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot. And like I said, I don't get paid too much to try and run the country at all. I mean, that would be fun. Um, but, you know, it, it does beg a question of why they're cutting where they are and whose idea it is. I mean, I'm not looking at a budget sheet. I don't know. But certainly I think that the UK can't really run without your military, without your firefighters, without your doctors and nurses, the NHS, as, as evidently proved in the last year, yeah. um, without your police officers. I mean, that, and, and then so to insult them almost, I mean, look at the NHS, what are they being given, a 1% pay rise? If no, is it even that? Uh, yeah, I might, not even, that might not even be that. Probably won't even be that, will it? But it's like... No, and it's just know. like, are you serious? You've got you one. know, they've solo handedly like worked for a pandemic. Yeah. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, we did do that, though. We did clap did on our door stamps. So... Brilliant. Yeah. You know, and it's just it's I find it quite insulting. Oh, I'd be that that's how we treat people that have taken care of us. Yeah. And I don't know. There's there's so much wrong with this country. There's so much good about it as well. You know, when people come together and and do things for a common cause. I think as a, as a nation, we are quite strong, but we've got a long way to go I'm to done. fix the mistakes that others have made. And I don't, I don't know how we're going to do it. It is a tough I don't know how we're going to do it. And I've just got to go to work every day and arrest the baddies. That's my job. That's all I'll deal with. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to do so, it. Yeah. yeah I've got, um... I know. At least they keep me employed. Give it yeah. That. Oh yeah, these these fraudsters and that. So that's your main job now, dealing with. Uh, yeah, it is. Fraudsters. Yeah, dealing with fraudsters, rock and roll living right here. Well, I sort of it. So it's a uh, the department. I mean, it's called specialist crime. So they do. You've got one side which is major crime, so the murders, kidnaps, um, stranger rape, things like that. And then you've got serious organised crime. They deal with your high end gangs. Um, and then economic crime. And we're just sort of under all the same umbrella. So if there's a shortage in any of the other departments, we sort of help each other. Um, so I was on a murderer. Mm. Actually, it was like this time last year, we had a, a murder in Surrey. Um, and I got drafted in on that. Um, 
Just sort of one big pot. Thank Everyone's just sort of nice thrown right. together. <laughs> oh, I got yeah. dropped in that. Nice. That's not not nice. <laughs> Dead. But how do you follow up? Yeah. yeah, I mean, but the guy got caught, so job well done. So I'm lucky that the department I'm in, yes, I get to focus on one main area and become a specialist in that field. But I also have the opportunity to deal with the high end. That's pretty good. <sighs> How can I word this without it sounding awful? There's probably no like the good side of put like your, your high end crime type, yeah. you know? I got you. So I'm lucky. I'm lucky that I've managed to get where I am, to be honest. And I enjoy it, which is a winner. You enjoy your job. Yeah, That's the main thing, job. right? You're, you're, yeah. It's awesome, isn't it? Um, yeah, absolutely. So I've got, here's a question for you. Because I know, I know that military guys can't really do it without getting annoyed, and that's watching military movies. But you, the yeah. same when it comes to police stuff. No, not at no. all. Um, so you could no, some of it's quite funny. All right. yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I'm quite, I'm quite weird. I like crime shows. I mean, I think crime is different to sort of military. You look at it, and it's the little things they get wrong. And occasionally I'll watch a TV show and you think, oh, that wouldn't happen. But if it happened the way it would in policing, you wouldn't have a movie. You'd literally just spend half the movie on the phone to CPS. So <laughs> I can see why they do it. I can yeah. see how they make it a bit more exciting because ordinarily some of policing is not the glamorous side of it at all. You know, you're sitting on hold, waiting four hours for a solicitor to turn up for someone in custody um, then waiting another two hours while your while your prisoner gets taken to hospital because he says he's eaten batteries, and then he's got to come back again. Um, then he has to have a medical. You know, it would not be a good movie. Like they would not, they would not roll with that shit at all. Yeah. So watching any form of cop movie, it's like, oh yeah, that's actually quite exciting. I'd join the police all over again if I <laughs> yeah, if I thought it was like that. Yeah, yeah, count me in. Oh wait, I am in, and it's not like that. But a lot of this stuff, like you're 24 hours in police custody, very true. To what we deal with obviously the latest one is the line of duty that's on the, to be honest i haven't actually watched it do not kill me but i've heard quite a bit about it and that they do have um ex police officers sort of overseeing it so yeah. they they are getting it accurate and or as much as much as it can be we, we, um, were, we were proper yeah. struggling last sunday me and the missus we were watching it and they were pulling out all the acronyms Oh, is this the jizz like, thing? Yeah, like they would normally, <laughs> like, like you guys, you know, like I do with my military mates when we're talking about stuff. And we yeah. put, like, acronym, love an acronym. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, love an acronym. And yep. me and Mrs. They were saying all the, like, there was loads of them in like a row. And we were just going, huh? Jizz, <laughs> jizz. Yeah, the jizz. That's a, that's a good one. And as soon as I heard it, they, they played the clip on the radio essentially when I was driving in that's the only reason I know about this one <clears throat> they said oh yeah they kept saying jizz in line of jizz I was like what why are they saying jizz in line of duty what episode was this <laughs> and then they played the clip I was like no they're saying jizz oh but I can see why people would think it yeah yeah no that's uh we do love our acronyms yeah I think, and I forget that sometimes when I'm talking to my other half and I've got or I'm speaking to mates on the phone and I'm then relaying it to him oh yeah we've done this day we had to go to the CPS and then Nacco came in and then we've got to do this, this and this. And he's just staring at me like, hmm? I was like, yeah, I need to send my phones to DFT and then we need to come out. And he's like, I don't know what words you're saying. I don't. You're, you're I was like, oh, yeah, speaking. okay, forget. Forget. Yeah, it's just like I, another language. Yeah. yeah. I think um, it's probably the same in, in the police force as well with um, just the way you talk as well. With you, you obviously have your own sort of slang. Like I, I did it with my brother <laughs> the other day. He, he's, we were talking about... Um, what are you talking about? Oh, because we got the charity football match coming up, and I was asking him about the kit. And then we getting a kit sort, and he went, "Yes, I'm sorting out on the 12th of April or something like that." And all I said was, "Okay, cool, tracking." And he went, "What?" I was like, "Tracking." He went, "What are you on about?" I went, "Oh, it just means I understand what you're talking about." And he was like, "Why don't you just fucking say that?" So, well, <laughs> chill out, mate. Fucking hell. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I probably get quite a bit of that, to be fair. I mean, where my mates, a lot of my friends are cops anyway. So we sort of get the lingo. It's quite yeah. rare that an outsider sort of comes in. And when we do, we are very conscious because you just look at the, their face and they're just, yeah. there's blank. Just blank. <laughs> just nod and agree. Nod and agree. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. No, I just think as a service, you kind of like it. Like you said with the military as well, you've always got your words that... Oh you yeah, abbreviate. But even even um, down to fucking 
the different regiments and the army, the air force and the navy. We all have all our have our own different mm. work and shit, and they're like, oh, all right, yeah, cool. You're a- <laughs> no i love it and yeah it's exciting well, makes you feel part of something doesn't it yeah definitely part of a, yeah. a bigger family <clears throat> so your your little side is it i don't know if it's a side project or or whatever is the your hunted is that hunted? yeah hunter be hunted yeah so it's a business that me um and steve that i was on the show with um came up with probably about two years now we started the event yeah. um then we're hit with covid cheers Please. um so we're finally building it back up again but it's actually turned into quite a popular event more for corporate companies that like a bit of team building how yeah. a group of military or group of police would see it because it's all the gucci tactics that you'd use on exercise yeah. you do it every day but to a civvy that comes in they're getting traced by drones dogs surveillance units on the ground got snipers in the bush in launching like grenades at them not real ones just like smoke grenades i haven't got the insurance to cover <laughs> blowing people up yeah um but it's that high adrenaline high octane whilst covering uh sort of making it like the show so they've got a team building exercises to do which they have to do as part of a team and yeah they have to make an extraction location whether that's a helicopter boat whatever they pay for really get horses there for all i care um and uh yeah it's uh okay because we're going to catch you good. Good, yeah exactly exactly but it is a game it's not as it's not obviously like hunted we do make it as more of a team building exercise so they can't basically we make it so they can't reach the extraction unless they've hit checkpoints in order to do that they've got to work as part of a team uh, it's quite good it's sort of mixing up that the your boring corporate team building day of catching each other and passing each other through those little spider web things remember that oh yeah like the trust exercises it's like mix like mixing all of that together yeah. into also getting smoke bombed it's quite fun cool. it's cool. quite fun so yeah, yeah. that's uh, just up and yeah we're starting that again we've got uh, another three events booked already and we haven't officially opened yet sort of reluctant to do it we tried doing it last year yeah. um when everything was getting released again everything was getting lifted um had a few bookings then and then you have to cancel them again rebook some sort of um siding on the airing of a caution around it at the moment yeah. i don't want to jinx anything oh, no, but yeah it just keeps me out of trouble cool. keeps me out of trouble a few days off when i don't work hard enough yeah, I, uh, not working hard enough. run around the new forest so it's, yeah it's a bit of fun a bit of fun sorry fucking and that's it i need so, to yeah. put the emails off on my mac it just pops up for no reason, and then it's like, "What? what fuck off!" But it just stay there. <laughs> Why did it stay there? <laughs> but yeah, the, the other reason why I brought up the uh, the hunting is obviously a friend of mine who's been on the show, John Beamson. They've started off doing an escape the lakes thing, and they're doing their own little hunter force. And they told right. me, they told me to ask you, do you think you could beat it? And I was like. <laughs> Oh, we'll give it a both go. They can come and try and do ours and we'll do theirs. But bearing in mind, we've got years of experience with this shit. So, uh, yeah, they can they can try. They can try. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the concept of theirs? What is this escape um, the lakes? Tell well, me. Well, I'm guessing they're in the... I, if I'm honest, mate, I don't fully know. You sort of it. It. I had a little look. Um, they're in the Lake District and I'm guessing... They've got to try and escape and evade. They've got a, a set of a hunter force, you might want to say, or mm-hmm. hunter team or whatever, which is uh, John himself, uh, Andrew Isherwood, and I'm not sure who the other guys are. Uh, they're all ex-military guys. They're going to try and hunt down these people that are bimbling about the Lake District, I'm guessing. Nice. We'll see how they're getting on. Apparently, they're, they're doing all right, as in sales-wise and, and whatnot. They keep asking That's me. brilliant. To, and I'm like, look, I'm busy. And I'm like, why? You can't be that busy, Tom. I'm fucking busy, mate. <laughs> fucking football match. I've got to try and get fit for that. Can't be getting chased around the fucking woods and the lakes. Oh, no fun <laughs> there, is there? No, I'm a big, I'm a big humbug. Oh, sure no, no, it seems sure to be doing all right. It seems to be doing all right, which is good. That's great. Yeah, that's really good. Really good, especially times like now. Any sort of outdoor event that you can oh, yeah, grasp and, and roll with, you know, you sort of already on the up with people wanting more of that we're coming into summer months 
Book Plans getting released in summer. You know, it's a no-brainer if people could, can start promoting those events. Yeah. That's great. And also with the um, new rules of can't travel abroad, which is going to do the UK wonders. Well, we'll do. And maybe we need to start I think so. Travelling more and making more of what we've got. I mean, there are some lovely places here. Last uh, yeah. Was it last year, year before last, I went down to Cornwall and uh, it was stunning. And you just don't realise that that is on your doorstep. And it's, it's probably more the guarantee of British weather, which pushes people abroad. I think if you right. could guarantee the summer, I mean, yeah. we had a lovely summer last year. Some of the days were boiling. If you could guarantee that for a solid week, two weeks, you'd probably, you know, you'd, you'd have that revenue and the people wanting to stay here but you can't i mean honestly like one day you're looking at 25 26 degrees and like the next day it's snowing it's like well you just can't odds it yeah exactly so, I, yeah. I, I totally agree like i i live in kent and it's beautiful certain places are beautiful certain places are fucking you're like what but that's like anywhere but i've been looking at what well, just use john and um and, and andy as a as a reference they, they obviously are out all the time because that's part of their job. They've got to be out on the peaks and whatnot. They take these photos. I'm like, where the fuck is that? Yeah. Why don't I know where this is? <laughs> the stunning locations. Really, really beautiful places. Yeah, maybe we need to utilise that a little bit more, I think. Yeah. Maybe this will be a good thing, no, no abroad travel. And that'll be fine as long as it works both ways. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, knowing the UK and what we're like, we're going to have probably loads of people coming here. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Bring it. Bring everything here with you. Sod it. You want to wear a mask? No, don't worry about that. We're fine. (laughs) Fuck it all. We're Brits. We're hardened Brits. So obviously, the rules are you wear a mask, and all four people that have obviously got um, mental health issues that prohibit them from wearing masks for some reason. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100 percent sure why. But I'm all for that sort of stuff. I was doing a school run the other day and there's one lady that had the lanyard on. Obviously, you're like, oh, yeah, cool. You got your lanyard. You don't need to wear one. There was three other mums that didn't have their fucking masks on. And I was like, why well, can't just put it on? Mm. The gate is just literally on the school grounds, is it? I know we're outside, but yeah. that's the school rules. They've asked for us to do yeah. it. Just, yeah. yeah it's just it's i mean i get it and, and when this all came out not that i was against wearing them it's sort of getting to that point now where it's becoming normality you know when you like drive past someone and they're on their mobile on their mobile phone and they're holding it up to their ear do you find that you look at them and are like oh we should be doing that oh definitely. you know because i say i mean i'm a cop i meant to I but it's that, I, I that around it you yeah, it's like yeah. a they're united together. If you're on your phone, oh God, you shouldn't be doing that. It's like one of the frowned upon things. And now I find masks is turning that way as well. Yeah. You look at people, oh, why aren't you wearing a mask? Don't understand. You know, and it's when they first come out, I thought, I'm never going to get used to this. I'm never going to. But now it is almost second nature. Like I don't go anywhere without it. Like half the time I feel like Batman because I'm leaving my house, I'm like, oh, my mask, forgot it. And yeah. then I'm like running back in as if I can't be seen without it. And, you know, I'm going walking around the Nick at work, putting it on, like, just lo- looking like I'm about to go and do some open heart surgery. It's bizarre. And if you told me I'd be doing that two years ago, I wouldn't yeah. have blamed you. You know, I, w- I just thought it was bizarre. But now I can't picture not having it. And when we do, you know, when it used to be acceptable that you'd go into work with a cold. Mm. You know, people used to go into work with a cold, they cough, splutter over everything. I was like, oh, you're not very well. You really yeah. shouldn't be here. But. And it's like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. I've dragged myself out of bed. I'm fine. I'm, fine. I'm here now. Look at me holding the fort for everyone. Yada, yada, yada. And then you'd be like, oh, isn't she bright? Oh, let's come in. She's not very well, though. You know, and that was acceptable to then infect everyone in there, even though it's just a common cold. It's still pretty disgusting. If you think about it. It's rats, mate. You know, yeah, it's not nice. It's not nice. So I think if any positive has come out of this, it's people learning a bit more about hygiene. And like oh. what is maybe nice and acceptable, like don't lick your hand and shake someone else's hand. Why do we need to touch people that much? I'm quite a fan of that. Just yeah, just, I mean, I was practicing social distancing long before it was cool. Let me tell you that. Oh. You know, the people I used to deal with, it was like, yeah, don't get, don't get too close. I'm, stay, stay away. Where you I'm know? in Hereford, like you don't. When I'm <laughs> right, so I'm from Hereford. We don't tend to touch people. That's our little thing. I like well, it. That's a good motto to have. People that I was with. I'm, I then moved to Kent um, 
well, when I started seeing the missus, we I'd travel down to Kent, where they like to do that kiss on the cheek thing. Like, okay. Oh, hiya, little pe- peck on it. I didn't get it. I didn't know what was going on. And I still don't. Like, if uh, Mrs.'s family come over, because she's got family over in France, if they come over, they do the whole two kiss on the cheek thing. I get fucking awkward. Like, awkward, like, awkward turtle. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I don't know the, the rules. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Yeah, and then you end up kissing them on the mouth. Yeah. It's very awkward then. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. And do it. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, sort I'm quite of just, hug- I move myself to yeah. the back and just put my hands in my pockets. That's not a bad way to be. It's not me a bad hand. way to be. On the, on no, the... I get it. And maybe even people you know like that. I mean, maybe that's all right. You know, giving the hug. You see family you haven't seen, giving a nice hug, friends. But moving on from that, it's like when you first meet someone, you shake their hand. To me now, I don't know if you feel the same. To me, that concept seems a bit bizarre. But I don't know where your hand's been. Have you just been to the loop? Have you washed? Have I got your wee on my hand now? <laughs> ah. Or worse. Ah. Or worse. Or worse. Or worse. You don't know. And I think it's put everything a lot more into, um, I don't know if it's perspective is the right word, but it certainly makes you think about things a lot more. Oh, definitely. You know, just going out, spatial awareness, everything like that. Um, yeah, it's a bit bizarre. And I, I don't know how quickly the UK will go back, or the world really will go back. I mean, I'm saying this, give it a year and everyone's going to be raving it up in a bar, you know, that when you go to the bar and not be able to move because you're like sardines in there trying to fight yeah. your way to the bar. I guarantee that will probably be it this time next year. Everyone's going to have forgotten about this. It'll be fine. And but that, right now, getting your head around that is bizarre. Yeah. But yeah, it's crazy. Definitely. It's fucking... But yeah. Mad. Madness. Definitely need to be outside more. I like it. I like yeah, it. I do. I agree. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I like agree. you're saying, we're, we've literally had a house full of fucking colds apart from me i'm the only one that hasn't had it yet lovely you just jinxed the shit out of that yeah, well done bad juju in it um mm. yeah so i think it's come from uh the girls being back at school so they're all yeah probably kids yeah. At school. the eldest has come home all bunged up then the missus got it like 10 times worse which now means that i'm gonna get it and i'm gonna be the big giant baby and yeah I, man, that's blue. What i am that's what i do killer Right. very rarely again touch wood i very rarely get ill but when it hits me i'm fucking useless i'm a useless proper man down oh yeah <laughs> and then she's like oh i had it you i wasn't that bad yeah i know but i'm different <laughs> yeah. My arms well, get everyone cold. gets yeah. these things differently yeah everyone gets these things differently though don't they but now she knows yeah. that viruses mutate so it's always going to be worse yeah you're going to be using that for a while are you Oh, definitely. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well, well played. Well played. I like it. Oh, fucking hell. So what time wow. you got your run? Tomorrow morning? Yeah. Uh, seven. Seven till nine. That's, that's, yep. that's too early. It's Sunday, mate. Nah, that's all right. Domino's is on order for 11. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. No, Love I'm only kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, no, no. Um, so yeah, just going to give that a go tomorrow. I don't know. It might be that we sort of run. We we've, we've been trying to do every other week. Yeah. Um, so we did, obviously did last weekend. We're trying again this weekend. But I've said like with my friends that I go with, I've said like, there's no pressure. We get and do half of it. Get sort of eight eight miles in, and we're like, nah, you know what? Let's just walk the rest. We can. I don't like the pressure of of yeah. having to do it. You know, as it does take the fun out of it. And at the moment, I do quite enjoy it it's quite a nice stress relief like today I went I only did five and a half this morning and I took the dog out and it was nice it was just me and the dog I mean he's a dick but <laughs> I mean that's fine it's fine it's uh it was a nice little run went up again at seven and it's just going up the woods it was so early was, wait I'm gonna get stalked now at the woods I probably shouldn't tell people this yeah seven o'clock I go up by myself my you dog is vicious if anyone is watching this my dog will eat you oh don't worry I don't have that alive no, you shouldn't advertise. Maybe you shouldn't advertise. She's not going to stalk you. No, no, I would say <laughs> not you, not you. But anyone else that may be watching, he's like a lion. Um, but yeah, no, he's really not. He's really not. But no, it was just lovely, and it was lovely being up there alone, and certainly in the summer months, because um, my dog's he's part husky, oh. and he melts in the summer. Like he goes proper dog down. 
there is no moving him. He literally lies on the floor, some form of starfish, as if his world is ending. And then he'll go out and sunbathe for a few hours. You know, he's very odd. Um, so ordinarily in the summer, we have to get up about five. Um, so he's a rescue yeah. um, from Romania. His English is getting better, awesome. just FYI. It's only taken six years for him to listen to me. So winning. Um, when I first got him, actually, off topic, I uh, started Googling Romanian phrases because I thought he only understands Romanian. That's why he's being so ignorant. It's because he doesn't understand me. Or at least that's what I told myself. Um, so I Googled top 10 Romanian phrases. Now, this was back in, what, 2016, I think I got him in. Um, so, yeah, it was top 10 phrases in Romanian. So it was like, yes, no. But number three was, have you seen my hoverboard? And I was like, what the, what is going on in Romania for that <laughs> to be a, in the top three phrase? Have you seen my hoverboard? So uh, it made me want to go to Romania. Still haven't been, but my it's on my list of things to do. We went to Romania. Right? Yeah. No, like, my dad just every now and then he'll book a trip and just fuck off. He sent, nice. me, a he sent me a photo and he went, guess where I am? And I looked and I went, you're in the pub. He went, yeah, but where? I don't know. Where are you? And he went, I'm in Romania. Why are you in Romania? <laughs> he, but I like he, it. I think it's when he gets pissed and he just goes, oh. Because at the minute he does a, a bit of CP work, so he's bit got a bit of money in his pocket, put it that way. He, he bought a ticket to go to Malaysia. This was before um, COVID hit. He was going to go to Mal Malaysia for like two weeks. It's like, why are you going there on your own? I like it. I like it. But he makes friends wherever he Nice. Goes. Why not? Yeah, why not? Why yeah, not? Got the balls to do it. Crack on. Proper chap. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Does he like Romania? He did. He did seem to enjoy it. He Apparently, came. it's beautiful. The areas of it are actually quite, quite stunning. Yeah. Well, yeah. I only saw a picture of a fucking um, pub. <laughs> well, yeah, it's good. Pub Better than anything. Yeah. Hmm. Sounds good. Definitely. It's good. So, so yeah. What? What made you want to join the uh, police force then? Getting back to the. Um, the thin, the, the thin blue line. Um, the bill. Genuine. Genuine. Yeah. Um, I watched it a lot as a kid, a lot. Um, loved it. In fact, yeah. when I was at Sunhill Police Station, I was an avid fan. Um, so I watched a lot of the bill as a kid, and I always said to my mum, "Yeah, I'm going to be a cop one day." Um, naturally went to school. Plans change, don't they? Um, I then was a farmer. I went to agricultural college, uh, worked on a farm in Somerset for quite a while before I realised there is no money unless you own your own in horses, farming, anything like that. No money. And it's long hours, especially when it's like foaling season and all of that stuff. Oh, God, I've got no sleep, no sleep. So I was like, right, I'm going to sack this off. Coming back home, I need a real job. Um, so I worked for a bank for a while. So, you know, obviously that natural progression from uh, farming to banking. Um, quite normal career career path there. Um, started working for the Royal Bank of Scotland, and uh, it was when Fred the Shred ran off with everyone's money. That was key. So everyone was getting made redundant, and it was my mum that turned around and said, "Look, Bex, you know you want to be a cop. Well, uh, sorry, police are recruiting, and they're making you do this college course, um, this law course. Uh, and just FYI, it starts in two days. So uh, I've." I think we should put your name down. I was like, yeah, there'll be no spots. There'll be no spots, but let's give it a go. Uh, she ran me back saying, yeah, there was one more and you're on it. I'm like, shit. Okay. It's getting, <laughs> getting pretty real. Um, so started doing that course, which was every Thursday. Um, and then I got a job with Hampshire Police, um, sort of in their control room. Um, so I was doing that at the same time as uh, studying to be a, a, a cop. And to be honest, I love my job. I like being in the control room. Um, I liked reporting all the crimes. It was like that nice little insight into policing and I enjoyed it. And then I just remember filling out these forms. It sounds really bizarre. This bit's going to sound bizarre. I remember filling out forms uh, <laughs> at college and uh, they were like, oh, you've got to do this assessment day. I was like, oh, I don't really know why, but fuck it. You know, I'll go. It was terrific. Very scary. Didn't like it. Um, they were like, oh, yeah, well done. You've passed. I was like, cool. Not thinking too much of it, knowing how hard it is to get or was to get into the police. And the next minute I got a phone call from Surrey Police saying, yeah, you've uh, got a start date. I was like, so, sorry, so what now? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, we want you, we want you to start in August. And this is 2010, and I'll always remember it because I was going to Vegas with some friends in August, and then I was back for a week, and then I was going to Spain for two weeks. 
so I, I said to him, so I was like, I'm really, I'm really sorry, I, I, I can't. She's like, you what? I was like, yeah, yeah. She's like, you're, you're, turning, you're turning us down. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm all right. She was like, this won't come round again. You know, it's, it's quite a big deal. We're, we're inviting you in. No, no one gets into the, the force now. I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to Vegas. So, soz, hun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Vegas. Um, it could win my million. <laughs> I'm just uh, going to go. So, I did. Uh, went to Vegas. And then between going to Vegas, I uh, had a week back and then was going to Spain for two weeks. They rang me back and said, we've got another start date in October. Do you fancy it? And at that point, I conceded. I was like, yeah. Yeah, go on. Why not? Oh, so. Just... No, my holiday's booked. Count me in. And that was it. <laughs> and that was it. Boom. Life ended as I knew it at that point. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Never look back. <laughs> Never look back. Every other day. Um, but yeah, no, so it was good. So, um, yeah, joined in 2010, started in uniform, which was great. Real eye opener. Learned a lot very quickly very quickly I mean I'm not saying I had a spoil upbringing but I was I was lucky let's put it that way I was lucky in my upbringing I had a mum and dad that adored me um they had good jobs I had my brother we lived in a nice area I mean the only dealings I ever had with cops were I, I did get pulled over once because I wasn't wearing my seatbelt have some of that actually I was but I was wearing it under my arm because it used to hurt kind of I know I know so I was half wearing it but yeah, I got pulled over and I shit myself. It was awful. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was it. I had no real dealings with the cops. I had no bad experiences. Like I say, brilliant upbringing, brilliant friends, no drama. And I remember my day one a shift and I, I had to go to the ACU, which is a mental health ward um, at St. Peter's Hospital in Chertsey. I'm still with a well-known offender that was just kicking off in the uh, car park. And I just sort of turned up and, and when everyone there looks to you because you're the copper to, to resolve and manage yeah. this situation, I was like, for <laughs> once, I felt like, fuck, am I ready to do this? I'm 22 years old and I'm here in the uniform. Everyone is looking for me to know what the fuck to do. And yeah. I have no fucking idea what to do. <laughs> you know, what, do you, what the fuck to do? And you just sort of learn to wing it, <laughs> as awful as that sounds. But no, you no, do, because no. you find if, you know, you, you talk to people and talking to people. I mean, I've not got a lot of force behind me. Getting into a ruck with someone, unless they're the same height as me, it's always quite a challenge. I've been in a few, don't get me wrong. Um, but it's the talking to people that I think I am good at. I can talk people out of situations that they're fighting. I'm like, yeah, cool, you can continue. You continue beating the shit out of each other, but you're both going to end up in the back of this police car or you could just lay off it, fuck off, job done. And then, you know, ordinarily that, that issue is sort of got, you know, no one's making allegations. It's fine. Everyone wins, yeah. you know, just by talking to people. But then you do have other cops that will just go in, no questions asked, just nick everyone. Mm. You know, so everyone does have their strengths. And, and I think you, when you join the police, you have to learn your style. What is, how are you going to approach situations that you have never found you know ever found yourself in yeah. and the unfortunate thing is you don't get practice you know you you find out how you're going to be when you're there um, and that is fucking scary and I don't suppose you know you probably dealt with the same thing you know yeah. you don't know how you're going to react until you're in that environment and then it's really like you and then they wonder why people make mistakes and errors are made it's like because you're only human you you, you could be dealing with this for the first time There's only and yeah you make mistakes <laughs> but yeah, definitely. What do you do? You can do in the in the training room to simulate real life. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, say that, virtually impossible. At the, at the minute, my as I call it, my regular human job. I'm a security site manager, so I'm the manager of a of a site in Kent. Mm -mm. A lot of my officers have to deal with uh, a lot of youth. Um, I say trouble. It's not really. It's just kids being kids. But a lot of my officers are quick to rush in and call them little dickheads or little cunts or whatever mm. lads you can't just do that you have to it's all conflict management if you guys have got SIA licenses use your conflict management if it mm. was going in a bit more aggressive then do it but if they're just kids, mm. with kids have a chat with them for fuck's sake otherwise they're going to go and mm. up another office yeah yeah <laughs> true I mean it's why it's it's different thing because other people would look at that and think no going clip around the ear bugger off home you know kids Back oh, in the day, when don't get me wrong, so around, would they? Would love you know, it's like it's that, but you're not allowed to do it anymore. <laughs> you know, you can't lock them in cages, you can't clip them around the ear. 
You can't gas them for fun. You know, they've just taken every all the fun away, really. Oh, <laughs> You I know. spray those little puppets. I know. There's nothing, you know, I don't see why we can't. And then you put the lighter in front as well, you know, really send them a blazing. No, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Anyone watching this, that's a joke. I do not set fire to children. Just saying. Exactly. Let's just clarify that. But yeah, so I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. Accidentally turn the body cam off. <laughs> it broke. It broke, Your Honor. <laughs> no battery, SARS. <laughs> Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't, don't. So yeah, it's all exciting, so, and things are opening up again now. So hopefully, hopefully, a bit more normality will resume. Pub, pub, pub well, and gym, pub and gym. I need, I need the second one because I'm still gym. A chunky little fucker. Um, as much as I, as much as I'm trying, but I've, obviously, like I said, I got that uh, charity match coming up. And I'm mm. I'm the fucking idiot that bet me misses that I wouldn't drink until the match. Like an idiot. And she went, I bet you could. I bet you can even. Because I, I usually... So me and my brother were discussing this the other day on a little tangent. We found that... I don't know if he's drinking now or not, but when I'm drinking, I loosen up more when I'm doing the podcast and the podcast goes for a bit longer. Because a lot of my mm. podcasts recently have been... Um, just under an hour where before mm. they were like two hours long three hours long not that right. i'm expecting you to stay here for three hours by the way <laughs> that's, because we were, that's because everybody was drinking and you're loosening up you're telling random stories about childhood and whatnot but now mm. it's like i've just had well i've just had a can of monster which is probably not the best thing to have i know it's like half eight i don't know you... um <laughs> <laughs> i've got no clocks in my shed but just lots of spiders um, all right lovely lovely yeah so we, we we bet that um i wouldn't drink so i've got okay. still a little bit of whiskey left in my decanter that keeps staring at me every time i come in here like you're gonna drink me mate it's like just... that'll be so good when you do like, though but yeah really I'll, I'll still be going to the pub obviously just not i'll have a I'll have a water a bit of h2o i like it but yeah why the devil not i am uh looking forward to the gym because yeah, yeah. Um, as much as I enjoy doing outdoor fizz and throwing me kettlebells about and and whatnot, there's certain things that I like to do in the gym that mm. like, it's just a different environment, and different space. Yeah, just yeah. And I'm, having, I'm with you on that. Having, I miss it. Like the kettlebells out out in the back garden. It's like it's a bit close to my sofa. That I'll probably just yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> just do one and then. That's enough for me. The bad thing about the gym, you go. Yeah. there's no sauna or steam. I do like a sauna and steam at the end, but they don't have one. I oh, really. I'll have to go to another. Yeah, one. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> mm. I do enjoy steam. Mm. Really? Just put your head over the kettle. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to really. Right. Just yeah, yeah, exactly. Have the, just have the bathroom just super steamy. That's not. Bad. Yeah. There you go, free. Dude, steam Put some Vicks in there. You know, we have that nice, oh, nice so little twins to it. It'd be nice. There was a um, there was a bloke because my dad used to own a gym, um, back in Hereford before I joined the military, and I used to I used to work there. Um, and in in the steam room that we had there, there was a bloke that used to always literally put like a massive cup, like a cup of his hand into a Vicks tub. And slap it in the steam room and it was like you'd walk in there and it was like jesus christ like that gets your airways going doesn't it like i, I can breathe now but i can't see <laughs> <laughs> i'm now blind nice yeah yeah you know so what are you drinking in a minute wine or are you just fucking oh no 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 just a bit of that giant coke for me Diet Coke. Rock and roll living right here. Yeah, I've oh, got a half marathon to run tomorrow. Live I? Dream as much as I am. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I know. I know. Is it just even. one dog you got? Uh, no, I've got two. I've got a spaniel. She's lovely. She went AWOL on me not long ago. Did a bit of a runner for a couple of days. Motherfucker. Did you go mm -hmm. Oh, it was awful, to be fair. Absolutely awful. So she's quite gun shy um, for a Get the drone up. I mean, she's clever as shit. Working dog. Well, believe it or not, we were going to, but it's just so thick um, wooded area where where she legged it. 
and where it was fireworks. So she was gun shy anyway. So they were shooting over the ranges, which sent her, uh, which caused her to bolt in the first place. But then we had um, a firework night before. Then it went on to Diwali at the weekend. So she was out with these fireworks. She just literally went to ground completely. And luckily she ran out into traffic. I say luckily she ran out. She ran out into traffic. Luckily she didn't get hit and just jumped into some random woman's car. But yeah, she'd been out for two uh, two and a half days, which is the longest two and a half days oh, ever. Especially if it's your fur baby. Awful, awful. But yeah, she's just sleeping now. Niles, you want a cuddle? Or are you just on the floor? Hmm? You want to come for a cuddle? Yeah, you do. You can say hi. Yeah. Come here. Give me a cuddle. So my Give me a cuddle. Come on, I've got Give me a cuddle. Give me a cuddle. There uh, she is. Uh, she smells like babies because she's had a bath. <laughs> yeah. She's a good dog. Abby, yeah, I have no idea where the other one is. No idea. Yeah, my my brother's got my dad's dog at the minute. Um, Jack, he's a... Uh, no, not Jack, Jerry. Jerry's the Springer Collie that we've got. Nice. He's an idiot, but he's lovely. Oh, she, she's a Cocker Collie. He's, this he's one funny. is good. Spring is good. He doesn't see me very often, but when I do come, he does this little sideways walk. He always, he's always done it since a puppy. Like, walk sideways a bit. So, what are you doing, you idiot? And then his other oh. dog, he has got an Alaskan Malmute or Malamute. Lovely. Lovely. A lot of hair. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I like yeah, to like and howl at him and he howls back. And I like to think we're communicating. But we're probably. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You're probably calling him a can. He's calling you a dick. It's nice. Yeah, it's brilliant. But yeah, he, he he's escaped a few times from my brother. My brother rents, um, and he's moved around quite a bit. I think one of his houses, he doesn't, he still doesn't know to this day how he did it. But Jack got out, managed to get on the roof of his house, and he was just sat on the roof. And it's like, oh shit! Nice, <laughs> fucking massive! Wow, on the roof, he's fucking huge. He's, he's ridiculous. Really. Yeah, I'd I'd like to say he's he, he's probably on his hind legs. He's taller than me, but that's not a big feat, really, because I'm only five six. But yeah, he's he's bit he's a big dog. <laughs> <laughs> You're all right, I'm a midget. We get it. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I can't judge at all. I'm only five three three quarters. <laughs> Ivan, can you please not squeak the ball? No ball, please, baby. Ivan the terrier. Sorry. Ivan the terrible. Ivan, Ivan the terrible. Yeah, he's trying to get my attention now, so he squeaks the ball. Repeatedly, I've got I've got a cat. <laughs> now you're in trouble. I was you got a cat? Yeah, I was outnumbered. Ah, oh, okay. But I, I've got I've got the I've got the daughters on side. They want a dog. It's the long haired colonel we got to get on side now. The boss of the house. Yeah. She's Just like, accidentally turn up with one. Oh, we didn't say no then. When, when we got J- uh, Jerry for me dad, um, we did that. We got yeah, him with. One of his birthdays, we got um, because he's always he, we were like, Dad needs a dog. He walks to the pub. He needs someone to walk with. So might as well get him a dog. Give him an excuse to get out and do some more exercise and whatnot. So we got him a dog, and he turned it, we we turned up at the pub with it. We we're like, Dad, is your is your birthday present? It's Jerry. Is it Jerry Springer? Love oh, that's Tom. So Tom and Jerry as well. Love it. Um, very good. And then he, he took it home and my mum, she was like, why have you got a dog? It's like, because he's brilliant. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. Say no my more. My mum's so funny with it. She's the same with um, uh, with my cat as well, whenever she comes to visit. She says she hates cats. Every time she sees a cat, she's like, oh, well, hello. So why do you say you hate it when you really like it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I think you're either a cat or a dog person. That's what I think. Anyway, I don't mind. I don't mind my cat. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, the choice. I would. I would have got a dog. Dog. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She. She's in a fucking annoying routine, right? And she will wake me up at about half five, six at the latest, because we don't have a cat flap. So she wakes me up. To open my bedroom window so she can get out onto the onto the um, conservatory, and then she goes off and does whatever fucking cats do. But uh, she just meows in my ear. Like, well, it's like, will you shut the fuck up? It's half past five in the morning. So what I've done now, I leave my window slightly like on a latch bit, 
And so when she meows, I just push her and she fucks off. <laughs> oh, poor thing. Yeah, me, I'm the poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Animal. Yeah, well, I got a lot of them, you? Band? What, else, what else is going on in the Mason's world? Um, yeah, not a great deal, to be fair. It's all pretty dull. Um, no, got some more warrants planned in a few weeks for this job. So it's a spin off from. So the last episode of For Love Nor Money, I think, showed the warrants crop out back, didn't they? Is that the warrants? Yeah. I think it was the warrants. Yeah, that was the last episode. So, yeah, I've got another five people, four or five people to get in for that. Um, so it's sort of an all hands on deck until warrant day, which is fun. Do love a warrant. Like Christmas. Um, yeah, a little bit. It's just all your hard work finally <laughs> pays off when you go and kick doors in. It's lovely. Um, so really, it's just sort of prep for that at the moment. Um, yes. Not much else going on. It's pretty dull. Do you get to kick the doors in or someone else do it? No, they do it. No. Otherwise, I just run. They put the hat on me and I just run at the door and just smash it with my head. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't really. No, I'm sort of reluctant to go out on warrants because I'm normally the one that will always get put in the loft or gets thrown over the fence. Um, we went to a job. I'll always remember it a few years back and it was on a gated uh, it had a massive gate to the property. So you're trying to be covert going in because you want the element of surprise, but we couldn't... Uh... Oh, am I still there? You still got me? Yeah, there you right. are. Um, but yeah, so the, we uh, we couldn't get in. So they're like, Becky, you need to go over this big, solid electric gate. I was like, okay, always a small one. All right, give me a leg up. So I'm straddling this gate. As I'm on it, I look dead ahead of me and there's the security camera, CCTV. I'm like, guys, cover's blown. Like my face, my face here is on their CCTV. And then the gate started opening, which is great. So I'm like straddling this gate as it's <laughs> slowly swinging over. I'm like, guys, guys, help. Can you help me down? No, 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 no. Little fuckers didn't, no. Because they wanted to go in and secure the guy in the evidence. So they fuck off. They run up to the address. Yeah, open the door, please. Yeah, yeah, they go in and do their thing. 20 minutes later, I'm like, still on this gate. This is a great day for me. The cleaner comes in. She's like, Sally, you okay? I'm like, pretty much, no, 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 love, not. Can you go and get a stool, ladder, anything? Do you want to just put your arms out? So in the end, I sort of had to roll and fall like a <laughs> sort of tortoise on the top of a wall and collapsed on a heap I mean it was a pretty high gate and I'm only short um but yeah I survived it so I did I was worried I was going to see a clip on YouTube but so far I think I'm safe oh, that was a few years ago now oh, so don't google cops on gates because it might be on there <laughs> might be I'll have to I'll have to YouTube it yeah I don't know I've never looked I've never looked but if you do see a copper on the on the gate i mean you'll see my face it was staring at their cctv but i thought if i was them i would be putting that all over social media oh, yeah. so yeah might be on there which would be fun getting little spiders just fucking drop down it absolutely of course absolutely Spider. oh i'm getting a low battery i'm getting a low battery i might pull. it's because the headphones are in the charging hole i do not like iphones that's what I'm saying. I'm an Android person, but my headphones didn't work. So we had to do a quick swap over, swap over to uh, uh, iPhone. Yeah. And the charging port is the headphone port. Yeah, stupid. I don't like it. I don't like this at all because I can't charge and plug. What is this? Also, so the new the new Mac, all singing, all dancing. Why has it got a different charger charging point port to the fucking phone? No. It's wow. the same fucking... That's part, that's a bit weird. Yeah, it's the same same. Like my phone is linked to it, so why can't I charge the cunt? Yeah, that is a bit um, bizarre, actually. Yeah, that's because they like you to spend more money on absolutely brilliant, brilliantly done. Bits wow. Fucking apple. Little little minxes. <laughs> Scally wags. <laughs> little damn those. Damn them all. <laughs> oh fucking hell. Shall we see if that's anyone's it. actually given us any fucking questions? How do you know if we've had questions? Um, I put a thingy out and said, What's... ask me some questions. And, so um, people are listening to this now? No, 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 no. This is on my side. Okay, cool. Oh, oh, good. Okay, because I was like, what? Uh, no, I haven't. It's yeah. fun. That always winds me up. People always see it, and it's like, just put a question on there. Uh, but, oh, you should have said. Uh, I, could, I, oh, I can't do it now. I, I totally forgot, if I'm honest, until I sat in the chair and I went, oh, I should have done questions. And to be honest, I didn't give you that much notice either, did I? That hey, I could do today. It was meant to be tomorrow. But yeah, well, 
I prefer I prefer that anyway, in in a way, because I can watch Line of Duty tomorrow. Now. Um, ah, look at that! See, <laughs> I was going to watch it anyway, but um, no. It, so many times I've been like sat in the shed waiting for whoever my guest is to just like either see the code for the for the Zoom or see the message to like just to confirm. The amount of times that people just fucking don't tell you and then go, oh, I completely forgot, mate. It's like, uh, you can come down here for fun. Well, I do sometimes. Yeah. But... <laughs> I was going to say, I bet you do. <laughs> yeah, it gets out of the house of house. Yeah, of the I do right. But, you, know, you get to stare at your whiskey. What more do you want? Yeah, I know. Still staring at me. Soon. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Exactly. E- exactly. Fucking brilliant. But no, we'll definitely have to uh, do another one with a bit more notes and I'll let people know. And we'll see if there's any hot oh, topics yeah. that they want mulling over. Get a few more. The bundle more of wisdom more. that we are. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah too right. Uh, out and about a bit more as well, which, which would be good. Can't wait. That would be good. That would be very good. Happy days. One day. Uh, One day. Nearly there. Yeah. I've been like sort of teasing it as well because obviously I've got I've got it set up in my in my shed because it's my shedio is my basically my little studio thing. I've got a, I've got another like chair it. with another mic and another fucking set of headphones that obviously my headphones didn't want to work today. But yeah, um, I'm I'm set up ready for actual guests. Genius, love it. One guest. That'd be good. That'd be good. But yeah. But yeah. That's awesome. It's been a fucking privilege to have you on, mate. It's been a nice. Yeah, thank you for asking. It's been lovely. Of course. Kept me out of trouble on a Saturday night anyway. Well, can't go anywhere. Nice. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know about that. I am the law. I do what I want. <sighs> I'm only kidding. Fuck me. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I'll break the law. I've got, I've got a rave next door later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But oh, it's been an honour to have you right. on, Pete. Thank you, and I will speak to you soon. Well, I'll let you know when it's um when it's out. It doesn't usually take me long to upload and stuff because that's yeah, no the thing about the MacBook. It actually quite fast. Um, Lovely. My my old laptop was like a fucking dinosaur. Like, <laughs> what, <laughs> this now? Fuck off, mate. So, oh, uh, bless you. Six years later. But yeah, I'll let you know when <laughs> awesome. it's um, when it's live and well, live, epic. You know what I mean? And I then, do. Great. Awesome. Well, I will speak to you soon. You will indeed. Stay safe. All right. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.